Shalom, Shalom, Aras Tefari, Rastafar I, in Adonai, Yeshua I, Hamushia I's name. Greetings, brothers and sisters. We want to touch on this out of Kemet series. Um, and there's a couple of basics that we need to really, um, confront and overcome. And this, one of them is the supreme delusion of the European mind. In other words, when we're speaking about what's called uh, Kemet or ancient Egypt, there is this um, idea, and it's a false idea, that Egypt was all bad. And everything that we can find in Egypt was bad beginning, you know, like Egypt was bad to the bone. Egypt was b- bad from start to finish. And this is a false, um, this is a, a, a false um uh, a false premise, you know what I mean, to begin with. And and many people begin with that because in the Western Gentile culture, if we look at the mummy movies, the mummy movies is, is one particular example. But then we also have within the popular Western Gentile culture, right, um, of Egyptology and folly, a lot of folly, a lot of, a lot of half-truths, that have been mixed and mingled into the popular culture and then also the academic. And there's been a warfare on the academic level as well as on some level, the popular culture level, even though it seems like on the popular culture level, there is still this um, confusion concerning Egypt. And for us as um, um, Ethiopian Hebrews, and we also speak to and, and for the faithful among the black Hebrews, who have dropped the Ethiopian connection because they're connected to some broken branches. But that's a whole other, you know, subject matter to really get into. What we want to just address right here in a couple of minutes is that ancient Kemet, i.e. Gubbets or Gubbets, um, Egypt was not all bad from start to finish. You know, and we have to start to look at, you know, our story, which when we talk about history as our story and look at it in reality, you know, but this means we have to confront a lot of the false paradigms that have been given to us by, you know, the popular Gentile media and, 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 um, you know, TV and, and movies and a lot of the books, a lot of the media has given us and still is giving us. And we see this all, all, all over the place in a lot of popular shows, you know, and it's on a multi spectrum level. So you might just see maybe the whitewash, you know, how they try to put a little more pink in the skins of, you know, of some of the, and give them European features and, and kind of, um, you know, so-called pinched noses or, or, or less fuller noses, so forth and so on. And other things in order to disguise that, you know, especially the older books are like that. And some still favor using those things or they might use those things today. Right. Um, but there is an awareness, right? There is a black awakening and the real black awakening. The righteous black awakening is, is the black Israel. Black Israel's awakening, rebirth, and resurrection, that whole valley of the dry bones time, and that birth of a nation, right? That birth of a nation in this Western Gentile hemisphere and in this uh, spiritual Egypt, right? We, we touched on that before, right? right? We touched on that before, and, you know, you can see it on the dollar bill, that spiritual Egypt. Does this mean it's all bad, you see? Because there's that... There's that false paradigm of fear, that fear matrix. Ooh, look at it. No, you need to understand, you need to comprehend, right, in spirit and in truth, what it really means. And if there's an evil that is being projected, how to overcome that and how to reverse the curse in the King of Kings and through his Christ, our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, right? And ones always look at this one and forget these are two eyes. Right, these are two eyes, right, and almost like the betu tu teta or haru, right, in in that sense. And they'll say, "Oh, look at the six pointed star," but look at the six pointed star and recognize, right. So this right here is the symbol of this modern spiritual Egypt, right? This this money spell. That's why uh, Timothy speaks about the love of money is the root of all evil. It doesn't say money is all evil. 
It says actually in the scripture that money answers all things, but there's, there's, that's part of the bondage. You can see the economic, financial, you know, bondage right there, but there's also a spiritual bondage. So we see even in this time that, um, um, slavery, as you can call it, or bondage, being in bondage is on, um, there's a full spectrum. It's not just, you might just see one aspect because that is what you are conscious of, but it's, um, it's like multi-level, right? And specifically seven, uh, specifically there are seven, right? And that number seven is also very key and very significant as there are as like, as, as above, so below, whatever you bind on earth, you bind in heaven, whatever you loose on earth, you loose in heaven. So instead of ones just like, oh, they want to get to heaven, they got to recognize what is in them, right? And who is in them and that whole process of repentance, of metanoia, of a change of mind, right? And that right there is he, being a Hebrew. When you understand what a Hebrew a periu really is. So when we see some of these debates and how they keep going, you know, throwing back and forth, slinging a lot of the um, Gentile white Western um, presumption on either side, whether the Hebrew or the Kemet, right? And this does not mean that we are going to excuse Egypt or fail to bring out where Egypt went wrong. But I think, I thought, I thought it was necessary at first to just state this right here that in ancient Egypt, Kemet, we have the good, right? We have the bad, we have the ugly. I mentioned that already, right? And I'm, I'm going to keep repeating this because it's well worth repeating, right? We really have to, you know, because we, we were born in this world, right? And this world that we was born into is a world of sin. It's, it's a world system. It's a matrix, right? Just like the Matrix movie says, it's all around us, but you can't really see it so much with your physical eyes. Although when your spiritual eye is open, then it becomes clear to you. Right. What you see, you know, your eyes are open. You can overstand that, you know, that wicked game that the enemy, you know, like the like like Paul said that we, we shouldn't be unwise, you know, to his to his tactics, his, his strategies. You know, let's not be unwise, brothers and sisters. Right. So when we look at ancient Egypt, we have a good period. Let me just give you kind of a kind of an overview biblically and so we can put things into a proper perspective because it's key. For us. When we are studying ancient Egypt, it's not to worship any so called false gods. You, you know what I'm saying? Because Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egypts. And when we see some of what we see in the Hebrew, of course, there is a connection to what is true. It's not plagiarized, right? And you have to show me the laws of Ma'at pertaining to copyright. There was no U.S. Ancient Egypt, spiritual Egypt, copyright laws. You see, and, and this is something we have to get out of that. There's something wrong with that mind, that, that mentality, right? It is still in bondage, right? Because it's not true. It's not in spirit and it's not in truth. You know, when they say that Moses stole, this is why we did a video a couple of years ago and, um, Slicha, I and I should have done a few more videos. But we have to keep banging on these particular issues and those brothers and sisters who are also able to do the same or to even repost some of the videos here there to your channel. Please do, because um, though people might turn off to some things at first, oh, I already know about that. I don't want to hear about that. It's just like many of us. And one day that 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 day come and we're like, oh, like we really begin to get it. And we hope and pray. Right. Because our father is not willing that any should perish. Right. But that they all should come to the acknowledgement of the truth and, and come to life and, and to and to overcome, but not to be overcome by this spiritual wickedness in this spiritual Egypt that we are in presently. Right. We're in a spiritual Egypt. So you can't react on that on that um kind of animal level. You know, a lot of people react to some of that instinctual level. Oh, Egypt is all bad and Hebrew. No, we, we look in the Hebrew, the Hebrews and the Israelites, especially the Israelites, they have their good period. You know, there's some things that we can see was good in the Israelite um, story or history or within, concerning in the Bible. And then we also find a bad period and we also see the ugly, right? Within the Israelites. Now it's easy to say, well, that's because 
these other people such and such well yeah if, well if you were right and you, like, like the scripture says people will shake their heads at us and they do shake their heads at so-called niggas and, and so-called black people right because we're bringing out all of this to show well, well well look how far we fell from and we're pointing out everywhere else instead of looking within right you know looking into the depths of our own soul, our own feelings, our own thoughts, our own minds in spirit and in truth. This is why the Bible says that the natural man cannot, um, you know, receive the things of the spirit because they have to be spiritually discerned. So some people say, oh, you're talking about metaphysics. We don't need no metaphysics, no esoteric, so forth and so on. That's too spooky for them, right? Well, no, it's too spiritually for them. Right. When we look into the Bible, we have a good period of ancient Egypt vis-a-vis -vis the Israelites and ancient Egypt. Namely, we have like, say, Abraham, right? The period of Abraham and even um, some of the period of uh, Joseph, of Joseph. Right. But seeing Joseph is almost like a mixed, you know, we really see a, a kind of a more, um, a more, a more good period of ancient Egypt co considered from the biblical perspective. When we get out of this foreign Gentile mind with Egypt, because where there's a lot of exaggeration and even outright lies and again, ancient Kemet is so obvious. I mean, if we, if they, if they lie to us racially and make us think that ancient Egyptians are not black or black or African peoples, then they could make us think that Hebrews, right, are not black or African peoples. I know some people don't want to deal with that term Africans. We're just using that as a as a basic nowadays point of reference. The more correct, of course, is Ethiopian. If you only knew the truth, we we kind of showed you a little bit of it in the previous um in the previous vid. But we have the bad period that really comes in after Yosef, but particularly where there rose up a king, a ruling intellect, a Melech who did not know Yosef. Really, who did not know the God of Yosef or, or, or the way of living in harmony with the Almighty that Yosef became a pinnacle for, like a shining light, you know, at the end or the fullness of that period. So after Joseph, we can say the good period in ancient Egypt, right, you know, um, was still there a little bit, but started to turn. And we see that turn in the first um, chapter in the first part of Exodus. There is a bad period that's coming about, right? There's a bad period. Even in, in conventional Egyptian history, when you go and check that out, they will tell you that, um, you know, how the, the, from the South, right? The so-called blacks, Ethiopian pharaohs or the, or the, um, Nubian pharaohs were continually trying to restore, right? Ancient Egypt, you know, or lower Egypt.